Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wrestle Horror. Greetings, viewers and listeners. Meet Hook Jim here, the Wrestle Horror Podcast. With me, as always, couldn't do it without him, my co host, Donnie Hoover. Donnie, here we are in December, and uh, we just had it, we had a great show this past weekend. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, like I said before, we talked about uh, getting through the haunt season and things starting to slow down, and we're, we're, we're pretty much wrong. <laughs> it's like things have still been just cruising right along, and you know, projects are getting dumped in the lap. So, yeah. But, yeah, this past weekend, uh, it was a great card, great show all around. I was real happy with it. You know, and and the thing that, that I really love the most is a fundraiser for Whitehall City Schools Athletic Program. You uh-huh. know, we're generating money to get those kids out there and enjoying their sports. And Rosemore Middle School had their wrestling team there as they were cheering on somebody special. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Their hometown hero. <laughs> That's right. Eric Smalls. Mm-hmm. Whitehall boy was out there wrestling on Saturday. And, you know, it, it was just a feel good. The whole show was feel good because it was all about the kids. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like I said, the kids were there. The The wrestling team was there. And some of the other you know athletes were there from the you know, Whitehall schools. So uh, it was very, it was a very cool experience and, you know, I'm glad we did it and, uh, you know, hoping we can do it again and, and uh, get a bigger crowd and more, put more money in their pocket and, and uh, try to make this a successful thing for them. Well, I think this might've been a proving ground. Uh, I think that the, there's an opportunity to, to generate more business through that. Mm-hmm. Uh, this being the first show, people are going to start talking. Oh yeah, for sure. And then when Whitehall Wars number two comes up, there should be much more crowd to entertain and to help, you know, raise funds for for the kids. Oh, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, And, you know, it was funny because when I got there, and I'm sorry about being late, you can blame the wife. (laughs) Um, It seems like we've heard that somewhere before. (laughs) I, I tried to come up without her, but it's like, it just, it wasn't worth the aggravation. No. Yeah. So anyway, we get in there and I forget that, you know, in a middle school, the, the basketball courts aren't full sized. Mm-hmm. And I walked in going, where's the rest of the court? <laughs> Yeah, it was nice though. Like I was scared to put the ring on their floor. It was like new and shiny, and I was like, "Man, this floor looks amazing." He's like, <laughs> "Hope we don't mess it up." Well, see that you know, I told Chris about that before we even left because you know me and my red shoes. Mm-hmm. It's like my red shoes might mark up a, a gym floor. I don't know. Maybe I should rethink this. Yeah. She says your 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 heels are rubber. It's okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I don't, they never said nothing. And when, like I said, when we took everything down and and he uh, and he like uh, cleaned it up or whatever, it looked like it was uh, really you know in good shape. And they never said nothing. That's great. So yeah, so yeah, you know, like I said, I don't think anything happened, and and uh, we're good to go. So, like I said, uh, hopefully next time we'll, you know, we'll be able to do it again. Right. Oh, I hope so. I hope, hopefully there's a Whitehall Wars number two, because I would really like to see that. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, yeah, like I said, we could probably run down the card and just talk a little bit about each match to let everybody know what they missed and if they weren't there. Okay. Yeah, I was, that was, I was going to mention that. Let's talk about the card. Yeah, I say the first match it was a uh, it definitely started to show off right. It was Matthew Taylor and Chuck the Truck Morris, so that was a, a good match I was looking forward to. And yeah, not the first time these two have been in the ring together. They've had a thing going on for a while, and uh, so it was a you know good back and forth match. And and uh, you know Taylor ended up getting the win at the end. 
you know, normal, normal Taylor, you know, had to bring the good book in, in the mix and, and use it as a distraction. But, you know, needless to say, he got the win. See, you know, that's one thing that's always tickled me is like, it's the good book, but yeah, it's Matthew. It, Taylor. it does bad things. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. And yes, he did use the good book to, to to chalk up another win against Chuck the Truck. But, you know, Chuck came out with a head of steam uh, when Taylor was uh, jaw jacking at the beginning of the match. And, uh-huh. and you know, although Taylor may have won by hook or by crook, uh, Chuck got his blows in. He got his licks in there, definitely. Oh yeah, he got him in on Taylor and on the good book. If you remember, he he took the book and uh, laid it in the middle of the ring and stomped on it. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, he did. Just so, giving his opinion of the quote unquote good book. Oh yeah, Mister Taylor didn't seem to take too kindly to that though either. So he, I don't think he liked that too well. <laughs> well, you know, the guiding light never has been one that's extremely tolerant. All right. He's he's very narrow minded when it comes to that, and he loves everybody. Uh-huh. So he says. Yeah, that's what he says. <laughs> and he, I guess, love equals pain because I see a lot of pain with the people he loves. Uh-huh. Tough love, I guess. <laughs> but uh, you know, it, it was a great match. These guys, like you said, they're familiar with each other. They came out, and it. I think that finally generated – the crowd was a little cool before the match started. Uh-huh. Uh, and it was a little – you know, it was hard. They're, they're, they're trying to get some reactions for the crowd. And they finally started to warm up. Uh, and towards the end there, you know, they, uh, they definitely – Matthew Taylor was getting the heat, especially with his uh, quote-unquote win. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it's just Matthew doing what Matthew does. Right. Right. <laughs> but the crowd also appreciated Chuck as he got out of the ring. So oh yeah. Yeah. He put him on. So it's uh it yeah, he, he's a crowd favorite, so they're gonna support him no matter what. Yep, definitely. Um, so match number two. Yeah, like speaking of crowd favorites, uh, one of New Ohio's more popular guys uh, is Saturn Price, and he got put in the ring. It's a New Ohio wrestling debut for this guy, but I've known this, this uh, big man for many years, for a couple decades now, and and uh, he's been around the block up and down the road, so he's no stranger to the ring, but it was Tommy Chill. Uh, made his new Ohio wrestling debut. And and like I said, he's a big guy. He's a strong guy. And uh, he got in there with Saturn Price to basically show, you know, remind people of Columbus, you know, who he is and that he's still around. And yeah, he didn't, uh, he didn't disappoint in that effort. You know, it was a, another good hard fought match, but you know, Tommy get the, gets the debut win with his choke slam. Well, they call him the smashing machine. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and with good reason, he is like Donnie said, he is a big man. He's a powerful man and he don't take crap from nobody. Right. Yeah. He, he posted on social media a, a while back where he called himself the yeet machine. And I just thought that was the best name I've ever heard. So he's the smashing machine, but I, I want him to be called the yeet machine myself. <laughs> <laughs> the yeet machine. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah, because he does, he throws people around and he smashes them, like he says, you know, but yeah, like I said, he's hard hitting and and I've been in the ring with him back in the day when I was active and, uh, you know, so I felt his power then and I'm sure he's even stronger now. So, uh, you know, I feel for Saturn Price. I feel his pain. I've been there. (laughs) So, Well, Saturn's not a small man. Oh, no, he's a good sized boy, too. Uh, and you know what? Uh, he 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 rallied a, c- a couple of times, but ultimately Tommy was just too much for him. Um, uh, all the valiant effort to Saturn Price, uh, this young man still he's still growing, and it's just a matter of time uh-huh. uh, be- before he moves up to the next level. But at this point, 
um, the, the experience of the smashing machine was just too much for Saturn Price to overcome. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like I said, he gave it a value and effort, but just, you know, wasn't enough that, that night. Well, you know, you, you're talking about, uh, I don't know how many years of experience Saturn has, but I know Tommy's got at least 20. Oh, yeah, over. So probably 25 years. Right. Mm-hmm. He he knows a few things that Saturn just hasn't encountered yet. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's like I said, he's been up and down the road. He's put in the miles, and and I'm sure he's I'm sure he's still got stuff up his sleeve that you know that a lot of these guys never seen before. Right, definitely, I agree. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was it's a pleasure watching these guys work too. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, Saturn came up short, but he's really got a good technique and he's improving all the time. And I've, I've watched him uh, over about the past year or different shows that we've done for new Ohio wrestling. And he keeps getting better every show. Oh yeah. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. I so said something, will, something will trigger and, and then that'll, we'll see a new Saturn price. Yeah. And he might even be able to pull off a W against somebody like Tommy chill. Yeah. Very possible. Very possible. So. Yeah, but speaking of hard hitting and big guys, this next one was, you know, a ring full of big guys and hard hitting guys. Right. Oh goodness. And, <laughs> yeah, and it was a rematch from the Arnold, and it was a uh, War Horse versus Bad Boys for Life, and uh, I expected a physical, hard hitting match, and you know they they didn't they delivered they didn't disappoint. Well, you got like you said, you got four big boys in there. I mean. Warhoss alone is what over six, maybe seven hundred pounds. Mm-hmm. And then you got bad boys for life, and the I'd say those guys are a good six hundred pounds. Right. Um, you know, bad boys for life in a little bit better shape physically mm-hmm. than Warhoss, but Warhoss has been teaming together a long time. Bad boys for life, not so much. Right. They've done a few shows together. Mm-hmm. And Pat the Bruiser and Crosshairs Kelly have been doing this for years. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And like I said, Beth and Bad Boys for Life is like Saturn Price. You know, they're coming into their own. It's mm-hmm. just a matter of time because they're already both established, you know, singles competitors. Right. Uh, Luis Casanova and Theo Strong, you know, they, they've already, you know, got the singles stuff going on. Now they're trying to form this tag and get this tag team going. So it's just a matter of time. But, um, yeah, it was hard-hitting. It was, you know, like a powerful match, and it ended the way it probably a match like that should. It was, a, you know, basically a double count-out, and they just fought outside the ring, inside the ring, all the way to the back locker room, and probably still fighting as far as we know. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> well, you know, bad boys for life. You know, they came up short at the Arnold. Um, This one was a no contest. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. What's going to happen next time they face War Haas? Right. Yeah. Like I said, they may get, you know, they may figure out the formula. You know what I mean? I mean, they, they've they they've gone from a loss to a no contest. To me, uh, as, as a fan, mm-hmm. excuse me, my dogs are fighting. Uh, you're fine. As a fan watching what's going on, um, seeing them lose and then no contest – as a fan, I think that's an improvement. That's a step in the right direction. Yeah, that's a that's a win, so to speak. Exactly. Now, being that I'm finally on the inside of the business, mm-hmm. I don't feel that much more different. I think they're improving, and I think every time they wrestle these guys, they're getting better. When is that W going to come? Is it going to be the next match or the match after that? They've gone from loss to no contest to possible win. Yeah. Like I said, you know, just same, same with the uh, Saturn price. You know, you never say never. Anything's possible. It could be, it could happen. Right. Right. And like you said, both of them established singles wrestlers that I've, um, ever since I got into the business with you, I've, I've seen Luis Casanova uh-huh. shortly after that Theo strong coming in. So these guys are young, they're hungry. Uh-huh. 
the world is their oyster. It's just a matter of time. Oh yeah, for sure. So yeah, but yeah, like I said, that that, that was a big hard hitting one, and uh, you know the next one was, was not so big and hard hitting, but it was a lot of fun, a lot of action, and that was uh, you know another fan favorite, if not the most favorite, one of the most favorite, and that's you know James Baker Hickey. You know everybody loves the Baker, and uh, he took on Paragon, a returning Paragon. And uh, Paragon picked up the win, but it was, uh, you know, Baker gave him a run for his money. I thought he, he probably could have got the pin three or four times there. He had Paragon on the ropes, you know, reeling a few times. Well, you know, Baker likes to have a little too much fun, and sometimes that costs him. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he definitely is a fan favorite. Um, comes out there, he just, he loves to dance. And, and Paragon's just looking at him like, what, what's going on here? You know. Yeah, and he was like getting so aggravated. He ended up Baker actually tricked him into doing some dancing of his own, and it's like so. Uh, yeah, I thought that was funny. It was like he was doing dance moves and didn't realize it. And then when he realized it, it just made him more mad. Right, right, right. It was it was a fun match. I mean, Baker always entertains. Paragon, you know, Paragon's. What can I say about? It? He's ridden both sides of the fence. Mm -hmm. Um. Paragon. Yeah, he had a little bit of a chip on his shoulder for some reason at this last show. He, he never really said why, but you can just tell he was in a foul mood. I agree with you, but you know, it, the very first day that you let me come to ring announce for you, mm -hmm. the very first person I met when I got there was Paragon. Yeah. And he walked up to me and introduced himself to me. He was the first one, even before I saw you. Mm -hmm. So I got a little place in my heart for Paragon. All right. <laughs> because he was very warm and welcoming. I mean, I don't know what this new attitude's all about, but. Right. Yeah. That's what I said. He looked like he had like a chip on his shoulder. He did. He didn't even, you know, he didn't even pay too attention to, he didn't look at me like he knew me or anything. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the ring with him, you know, I mean, come on. I mean. Right. <laughs> I might be bigger than him, but yeah. I'm not a professional wrestler. I'm just a ring announcer. Right. <laughs> but it, it was kind of disappointing that that he kind of snubbed me. Yeah. That's I say he wasn't very talkative, it didn't seem to be. No, no, not at all. So maybe it's like I said, it's maybe a new new paragon that we're seeing here. Who knows? And see, the funny thing is, and uh, on the flip side of the coin is Baker. I had to go up and introduce myself to him the first time. Mm -hmm. It's like, but it was like Paragon came right up to me, like I was one of the boys already, you know. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's kind of a reverse thing from what's going on in the ring. All right. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? It is. It is. Yeah. So, uh, you know, yeah, like I said, Paragon got the win on that match, and it was a pretty entertaining match, to say the least. And uh, after that, we did a, a quick intermission, you know, just and wanted to try something different. We've never done pictures inside the ring and, and uh, charged money for it, but we figured we'd give it a try since it was a benefit to help the Whitehall Athletics Department. And it was like way more successful than I expected it to be. You know, I figured we'd get a handful of people that would want it. We just did, you know, we had, you know, Superman Onyx, the Arnold champ out there. We had pair, uh, had uh, Marion Fontaine, the Arnold or the new Ohio champ out there. And then we had the hometown boy, Eric Smalls out there right. and they were all three in the ring. We charged $5 a picture and all proceeds went to the athletic department and we got a pretty good response and, and raised quite a few dollars for them with just that, you know, just that intermission. So yeah, the, the athletic the director was real pleased with it and she was very glad that we did it. And, uh, you know, like I said, every, every penny we made from the pictures went to her and, and, uh, she, you know, put it toward the athletic department. So that was a pleasant, you know, pleasant surprise. We was glad to do that. And it was actually kind of fun, you know, a lot of fun fans getting in the ring and talking to them and, and stuff like that. Well, you know, um, the line was a lot longer than I thought it would be. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's what I told Eric. And then when we were like halfway through, I looked over my shoulder and still seeing the line was real long. And I was like, man, this is a lot more people than I expected to be up here. <laughs> so, but yeah, so I was real pleased with it. You know, everybody wanted to help the the athletic, you know, department. So, you know, kudos to the fans that, you know, donated for that cause, you know. Yeah, you know, I heard I heard Melanie saying she was charging five bucks a person. Yeah. Yeah, well that's what they were that's what they were supposed to do. Like you know, anybody that wanted to be in the picture, you know, they donated five bucks to the Whitehall Athletics. And, you know, they were, like you said, the fans lined up and drew, made a big line and was happy to do it and help out. So I thought it was awesome. Oh, yeah. You get five people in and that's 25 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. And that, like I said, that uh, intermission went for at least, at least a half hour, if not longer. Mm hmm. Yeah, and that was another thing. We wasn't expecting it to last that long. We was just going to do like a 15-minute quick one. Right. But they, you know, like I said, the picture line was so long and getting people in and out. And, you know, you got to be careful because they're not used to getting in a ring and hold the ropes. And right. So it took, you know, it took some time to get through the line. So <laughs> I said the crowd didn't seem to mind it too much. So that was a good thing. No, I, I think it went on. I think the big the big selling point was the fact that all the money went to the athletic department. Oh yeah, for sure. It's getting the extra people out there because I mean, you know, like the crowd was cool at times, mm -hmm. but during this, it's like, bam, it's like, yeah, where it came to life, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It was the pictures and then the buy one, get one free hot dog gimmick after the intermission. People seem to line up to get those too. <laughs> Did you hear what that one person said when I announced it? Uh-uh. Oh, sure. At the inter intermission. Now you tell us they're buy one, get one free. <laughs> That's kind of the point. <laughs> it's like, hey, I'm just the messenger lady. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Did she go up and get more? Uh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> buy one, get one free hot dogs, man. Yeah. That's kind of like diamond dog night, isn't it? <laughs> I remember at the the old Columbus Clippers games here, they have Diamond Dog Night or used to. I don't know if they still do or not, but we'd always go and you'd get a hot dog for a dime. So I'd go up with a dollar, get ten hot dogs, and maybe eat maybe eat three of them. <laughs> well, I know uh, the Cincinnati Cyclones do like dollar hot dog and beer night or something. Mm -hmm. Like a dollar hot dogs and dollar beers. It's like, oh damn, sign me up. All right? Yeah, for sure. So yeah, that was a great intermission, and mm -hmm. know, I wish people could have seen <clears throat> the outpouring of the people that are there. I mean, the crowd was was moderate, right? Mm -hmm. Could have been better. You know, could have been worse. But the outpouring of the people that were there um, to make sure that this the athletic department was supported was great. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, like I said, it was it was a good thing to see. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so we, you know, we come back from intermission and, you know, we had to start it off hot and, you know, try to get the people back in their seats and back into it. So we ran the uh, the new Ohio wrestling championship match okay. right out of intermission. And it was uh, Ben Boone and, of course, you know, everybody's favorite champion, Marion. Well, one of everybody's favorite champion. I don't want to say the, you know, <laughs> offend somebody, start the letter O. But uh, <laughs> yeah, some people, you know, like – the uh, the new high wrestling champion Marion Fontaine. So Ben Boone, Marion Fontaine, and other guy, you know, two new uh, two guys that's been around the business for years and years and years, and has been uh, across the ring from each other on multiple occasions, many times over. And uh, so yeah, so we set that one up because we wanted to test Fontaine, and and he you know, stood up to the challenge and pulled out the victory. He did, uh, and you know Benjamin Boone, the Bachelor. Mm -hmm. Uh, he, he definitely gave it his all, but it, it tickled me because, you know, he, he found a way to get a reaction out of the crowd. Uh, and he, he gets up there and goes, you know, go big blue, go Michigan, right. <laughs> of the Columbus area. All right. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that went over too well. Uh, definitely got some heat for that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but and I don't know if it I think it might have kind of fired up Marion a little bit more it's like hey you know you're not going to talk about you know 
Michigan here in, in my area of Ohio State. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I might have said I might have tweaked him a little bit, too. Yeah, you're right. Right. I, the, said, I, I know I'm, I had to go in the back uh, during the start of this match. All I know is I came out and they were going at each other and there was rose petals everywhere. <laughs> I was like, what the heck just happened? <laughs> so, Oh, the rose petals. It was it was great. Um, and he tried to give the rose back to this woman that he denied earlier, and she threw petals. It was, you got to watch the replay. It was, yeah, it, <laughs> yeah but, I figured I figured he tried to pull some shenanigans and it backfired if the petals were all over the floor. So, if, you know, obviously, they whoever he presented the petals to or the rose to said no. <laughs> well, he denied. He, he had, he reached out and she goes to grab it and he snatched it away. I said, no. <laughs> nice. Fake. Um, you know, but that's why he's still the bachelor. I mean. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they say he's got to let go and give him the rose if he doesn't want to be the bachelor anymore. Huh? Right. But, uh, you know, he was, uh, he was a bit smarmy and uh, he just uh, crappy attitude. Um, mm. but Marion Fontaine, oh my gosh, he is a ball of energy from start to finish. He comes out to the ring running. Um, he's got this really pumped up intro music mm -hmm. and, uh, he wasn't going to take any shenanigans from the bachelor. I don't know. Yeah. Like I said, they went at it and like I said, no, they're, they're no strangers to each other. They, they know each other very well and. So it was a good challenge for him. So, you know, like I said, he lived up to the challenge and pulled out the win and the crowd seemed to enjoy it. So it was all good. They did. They did enjoy it. And they enjoyed the fact that Ben Boone lost. Right. <laughs> so, you know, it was, uh, it was a win-win and you know, the crowd was heat starting to heat up, you know, it's, it took a little while. Mm -hmm. And I think some of them just weren't, weren't, quite sure what to expect right you know mm -hmm. uh, but the fact that they started to react you know not only did it it give you know the rest of the crowd hope but uh, the talent themselves you know that everybody loves to work for a hot crowd right mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you just got to pull out all the stops to get that crowd hot oh yeah yeah. So, yeah, like I said, you know, once again, good match. Uh, Marin Fontaine, still the new Ohio wrestling champion. Yep. And uh, so we moved on to the next match, which was another title match. It was the Arnold's Sports Festival title match. And, you know, another one of everybody's favorites, <laughs> Superman Onyx, you know. And this was a uh, rematch of a rematch, you know, Um Robbie Starr, Superman Onyx, battled at the Arnold right. and uh, came up, you know, Robbie came up uh, on the short end of the stick of that one and never really did get like a rematch, you know, grudge match for it. And uh, so, you know, he got one here and, you know, they had, they had wrestled before, you know, after the Arnold and, uh, you know, he wasn't successful. And, you know, of course, Robbie complained to management and all this and that and, you know, demand a rematch. So, you know, we gave it to him and, and uh, so once again, it was, you know, the show Robbie Starr and Superman Onyx. And, uh, you know, that first match uh, for the for the title um, back at the Arnold Kids and Teens Expo. Mm -hmm. uh, Arnold may or may not have been involved in the finish of that match. Oh yeah, yeah, and of course Robbie was using that as a as a reason why he needed another match, another shot at it. <laughs> he's right. gonna he's gonna run that Arnold incident into the ground. I can tell you that. Of course he is. Anything he can to get that title around his waist, and mm -hmm. nobody, I don't think anybody can take that title away from Superman Onyx. Yeah, I, I don't see anybody. Like I said again, never say never, but I don't see anybody uh, doing it for a while. <laughs> Uh, and he's he's uh, you know he's rebuffed all challengers. Um, there's been a couple of times it got close, and it was we were getting kind of nervous. Going, is this the time he's going to lose it? Mm -hmm. But in the clutch, you know, Superman Onyx prevails. Yep. 
Yep, he always seems to find a way. And I'm sure after this match, Robbie had something to say to you about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. We heard the whining and the complaining. and <laughs> hey, We've heard it all. I mean, I'm sure he'll want another rematch. He'll want a rematch to the rematch to the rematch. Of course. He's, because he's, Arnold screwed him over and whatever. <laughs> it's just like, he doesn't want it until he, gets, until he somehow manages to win the title. Yeah. I know. I say, if that ever does happen, if he ever does happen to win it, then he's probably not going to enjoy it because that's probably going to send Onyx over the edge and, and well, then – They'll have an angry Onyx after after that. <laughs> yeah, you know, I like Onyx, and I don't want to see angry Onyx. Right, yeah, I can imagine it's not pleasant. No, that scares me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, yeah, I've said it before. I, I may be taller than him, but the man scares me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, once again, uh, Robbie had him reeling, had him going, and like you said, there was a couple close calls, but – at the end of the day, you know, Onyx gets that big spear and nobody, you know, gets up from that spear. So uh, that was all she wrote. And Onyx, you know, retains his title. Well, you bet you're probably going to have to about kill Onyx to give up that title. <laughs> you got to do something. I mean, he is he is very proud of that title. Um, He he loves showing it off. He loves interacting with the kids with the title. Um, which you know Robbie would just like ignore mm -hmm. everybody except himself, maybe. Oh and yeah. Maybe Mark Caval if he manages to get his fingers involved. Right. Yeah, I was just thinking like a way to beat Onyx would be like the old WWE match where they took the uh or they took the the forklift and the skid and put it down over top of the the guy and held him down for the pin that way, but Onyx could probably just bench press that forklift off of him. <laughs> right, right. Uh, <laughs> the only way I could see Robbie winning the title is like a Montreal screw job. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then you still have to deal with an angry Onyx. All right. Which I don't know if he'd want that to happen or not, you know. <laughs> yeah, that would be a very angry Onyx. Right. Especially in those circumstances. Oh, boy. <laughs> no, thank you. Right. Yeah, but, you know, like I said, another great match. And uh, Onyx pulls out the win and retains his belt. Yep. And then, uh, you know, the last match of the evening was the hometown boy and uh, your favorite wrestler and manager as well. So it was uh, Jake Ely and Eric Smalls. Yeah, I, and I, I said it at the show. I'm going to say it again. Caval gave you money to put him in the main event, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know if he did that, but he he pulled some strings somehow. It's, it's like I, I looked at the card, going, "How the hell did Jake Ely get in the main event?" Yeah, it's like. I mean, really? I do. I do have two brand new twenty-seven inch monitors sitting right here. No, <laughs> ah, see. <laughs> I knew it. Right. <laughs> I knew there was some bribery going on. <laughs> but you know what? In the end, didn't matter. Nope, didn't matter. Yep. His, the half pint punk pulled off the win in front of his uh, in front of his home crowd. And and cool thing about it is uh, he had his wrestling team. He actually is a, a assistant wrestling coach. And uh, he had his wrestling team, the kids for the middle school, come out. And they came out and made like a tunnel way for him. And, you know, he got to come out and then they got to stand around ringside. So, you know, some of the athletes from the White Hawk kids uh, got to got to get involved and they got to stand ringside and walk the walk their coach out to the crowd or out to the ring. So it was a very cool moment for him, you know, and then afterwards and after Eric Smalls got the win over Jake Ely, then, you know, all the kids got in the ring with him and they, you know, did some pictures and stuff as a team. And so it was a real special moment for him. So it was real cool to see. You know, and it tickled me too, because some of the kids were instrumental in keeping the golden idol from getting. Yeah. They kind of, they kind of did the old circle the wagons around him, didn't they? <laughs> It did, and I couldn't think of a better person to it happen to. 
Yeah. I mean, I don't think I'd have been too upset if they had put a couple kicks in on him or a couple punches on him, but, <laughs> but yeah. no, they were, they were good. You know, they just kind of circled the wagons and surrounded him and, and he was like real nervous and it kept him out of the match. You know, he, he kept trying to get involved and, and kept messing around. So they kind of just, uh, you know, went around him to where he couldn't get involved anymore, which, you know, was a good thing. And on top of that, the kids managed to obtain that pseudo championship that yeah, the Temple of Terror title <laughs> puts on whoever he wants to whenever he does a show. Yeah, yeah. And they got in the ring and took the took their their team picture. They had they had the Temple of Terror title. So that was you know, that was kind of funny actually. Yeah. Yep. It's like, okay, you know, this time it was Jake Ely, Jake Ely's title, but another time it was Brandon Fields' title. It's like, you know, make up your mind. All right. It's not a, it's not even a legitimate title recognized by New Ohio Wrestling. Yeah. Uh, he came out with uh, Tommy Chill, too. Tommy Chill, you know, said he was going to start uh, kind of keeping an eye on Caval for people picking at him and stuff. You know, was he the Temple of Terror, Ch Terror champion or? No, he didn't come out with a Temple of Terror belt. Oh, OK. Maybe Jake just wanted it for himself, you know, on that one. Well, you know, he's he's got he's gotta have something to make himself look big. <laughs> Eric Smalls is almost bigger than he is. <laughs> yeah, very cool. But yeah, like I said, another entertaining match and a lot of fun. The crowd liked it. And yeah, you know, Eric Smalls picks up the win again. And if you noticed, I was nice. Yeah. I introduced them properly. I did not mess it up. Right. <laughs> Although I was tempted. Mm -hmm. I I for a half a second I almost said Thunder Chicken. Yeah, I'll mean, say he he enjoys it when you call him that. I'm sure. But I was nice to him. I did not insult the Golden Idol. I did not insult Jake Ely. Yeah, he was on your best behavior. I was, but don't think that's going to happen every time. Because <laughs> yeah. I'll do what I did, and I'll sit there with the microphone during his match and go Thunder Chicken. Yeah. <laughs> I think one day me and Jake should have a match. There you go. I can talk to management. I'm sure they'll set it up. Are you in Caval? <laughs> <laughs> that would probably, no, oh God, the, who's going to break first? <laughs> yeah, who's, whose hip's going to go out first? <laughs> <laughs> Well, with me, if I if I just get my hands on Jake, I can throw him. I mean, right. <laughs> oh, but you know what? It, it was a great show, Donnie. And like mm -hmm. I said, we've said it many times. This show benefiting the kids, and and that's what's important, you know. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And like I said, we had a lot of people stepping up and helping out sponsorship wise too you know the the folks at carnage was there and again you know helping out and right. then uh you know like our our buddy uh aaron at be smoking barbecue he uh provided you know food for the for the team in the back and it was absolutely phenomenal and uh so i don't know if you had a chance to get back there and get a plate but uh if you didn't you missed out <laughs> I did. I, it was pretty much cleaned out by the time i got back there yeah, well, yeah, it was some phenomenal food. So, be smoking barbecue. If you're ever looking for any kind of catering, reach out to the, to Aaron at that be smoking barbecue. It was great. And again, you know, Carnage Haunted House. You know, they're going to have you know shows and events coming up. You know, throughout the throughout the year up until haunt season. You know, special occasion shows. So keep an eye out on them. Right. And you know, a lot of a uh, lot of good stuff going on. Yeah, unfortunately, by the time you hear this, it'll be after the weekend. Um, mm -hmm. There is a show this weekend, or which will be last weekend when you hear this, at Carnage for two nights called Wreck the Halls. But uh, yeah, yeah, and I'm looking forward to it. I need to get some of my spooky scares in. It's been over a month now. I'm starting to get the itch already. <laughs> See, Donnie got lazy. We should have done this on Sunday. No, I know. Would have known true. It. <laughs> that is true yeah kind of slacking yeah you know you, well you're not like john orlando he's the original slacker right 
All right. Well, that's it. Yeah, that was the card. And like I said, it was a good, it was a good show and, you know, raised a little bit of money and tried to help out the athletic department and looking forward to doing it again. Now 25 Whitehall Wars number one is in the books. Yeah. Now 25. I uh, think we started it now like nine. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. So you've been around for a few of them. Yeah, I've been around for a few. <laughs> a lot better than I used to be. <laughs> oh, yeah. Getting better every show. When you show up on time. <laughs> oh, I was waiting for that. <laughs> I was waiting for that shit. <laughs> well, I had planned to be there at 3 o'clock. <laughs> right. It didn't work out, huh? Not when I got her. <laughs> She wears me out, dude. <laughs> that's just a handful. Yeah, but hey, that's enough of that. People don't need to know my personal life. All right. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> so I'm Meat Hook Jim. That's Donnie Hoover. Forget the last 30 or 45 seconds you heard. <laughs> this is the Wrestle Horror Podcast. We'll catch you on the next show. <laughs> See you guys. Thanks for listening. Make sure you follow us on all of our social media outlets, facebook.com backslash WrestleHorror, Instagram at WrestleHorror, Twitter at WrestleHorror, on YouTube at the WrestleHorror channel. And you can also find us on our website, www.wrestlehorror.com. <laughs>